A Tale of Two Beasts by Fiona Roberton Part 1 The Strange Beast I was walking home from Grandma's house through the deep dark woods when I spied a strange little beast. He was stuck up a tree and whining sadly. So I decided to rescue him. I will call you Fang, I told him, and I wrapped him warmly up in my scarf and carried him safely home. I gave him a lovely bath and a gorgeous new hat and jumper and a delicious bowl of fresh nuts. I made him a beautiful house and gave him Lord Rex to play with. I took him out for lots of long walkies to keep him fit and healthy. And I showed him off to all my friends who loved him nearly as much as I did. But for some strange reason, the little beast did not look very happy. In fact, he was looking rather hot. I hope he's not sick, I thought, and opened the window to cool him down. But then something terrible happened. He threw off his clothes, leapt out of the window, and ran away as fast as he could, back to the deep dark woods. I wanted to go and look for him, but Mama had other plans. I couldn't sleep. I missed the little beast and wondered if I would ever see him again. But then, a small furry shadow appeared at the foot of my bed. The strange little beast had returned. He seemed quite pleased to see me. And I began to think that maybe, just maybe, he wasn't that strange after all. I wonder why he came back. Part 2 The Terrible Beast I was hanging from my favourite tree, singing happily to the birds, when I was ambushed by a terrible beast. She growled at me and tied me up and carried me off to her secret lair. She made me disgustingly clean and dressed me up in a ridiculous hat and jumper and tried to make me eat squirrel food. She kept me in a tiny box with nothing for me to do and nowhere for me to hang from. She made me walk backwards and forwards and backwards again for no reason whatsoever. She showed me off to a herd of even wilder beasts who were just as terrible as she was. I had had enough. I made a cunning plan and put it straight into action. Free once more. I raced back to the deep dark woods before the terrible beast could catch me. It was peaceful in the deep dark woods, a bit too peaceful perhaps, and also a bit wet. In weather like this, one could do with a nice warm hat. I snuck back to retrieve it under cover of darkness. The terrible beast was waiting for me. She seemed quite pleased to see me, and I began to think that maybe, just maybe, she wasn't that terrible after all. 